Well, the penultimate episode of American Horror Story Delicate has just been released and it pinned a few connections, answered a few questions, and provided a bit of clarity on certain situations and characters within this season of the show. Following an episode last week that was focused on Adeline and Dexter and the Ravenheads, this episode gave us Anna and Siobhan again. With the deal being sealed with a kiss at the end and Anna's dreams most likely turning into nightmares, let's jump into this episode and break down all that there was to take away from it. Here is American Horror Story Delicate Season 12 Episode 8 Ending Explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. The Opening Section and Rosemary's Baby so the opening scene of this episode was one which had a few different connections within it. It was set during 1967 in Manhattan, where we saw Frank Sinatra and Mia Farrow together. Within real life, Sinatra and Farrow were married between the years 1966 and 1968. The scene of them together served its purpose in showing us the viewpoint of what a man's mind was like, more so back then. But it's the mindset that Siobhan had brought forward with her in the present day and something which has been at the core of the show. This is that a woman needs to sacrifice her passion, career, and things that she enjoys so that they can be mothers. Sinatra essentially put Farrow in a situation where she had to decide between whether she wanted to be with him or if she wanted her career. He said how a woman belonged at home and questioned how she'd expect to be a good mother if her career and an Oscar is what she was chasing. This supported the underlying theme that had been present that had been running throughout the entirety of the show, but more so in part two of this season. The encounter between Sinatra and the fan and Farrow and the fan had two completely different tones and moods as well. The person was infatuated with Sinatra and wanted his autograph, whereas when he spoke with Farrow, he paid her a compliment and then walked off before she could even respond. Within real life, Sinatra and Farrow did actually get a divorce because of Farrow's time on set whilst filming the movie Rosemary's Baby, the film that we saw being created in this episode of the show with Roman Polanski directing it too. However, it wasn't because he wanted her at home being a mother. It was said that Farrow agreed to be in Sinatra's film, The Detective, but due to the filming of Rosemary's Baby overrunning, Sinatra filed for a divorce, and he did it in a way which meant that she was served papers in front of the entire cast and crew of the movie, showing a complete lack of respect for her. Something which, although it doesn't necessarily mean that he valued her less because she was a woman, it showed that because she didn't do as he said or as he wanted, he didn't want her anymore which does kind of tie into that mindset. So it was interesting seeing their relationship being depicted on screen in the way that it was. It also felt like this was Murphy's way of getting his love for the Feud series that he created into American Horror Story 2, but I thought it served its purpose well. This opening section also served as a way of bridging the connection to the book and film Rosemary's Baby, which has had a deep-rooted connection to the story that AHS Delicate seems to be following. We saw Mia Farrow on the set of Rosemary's Baby alongside Roman Polanski and Sharon Tate. It was said that Tate wanted the role of Rosemary, but Mia Farrow was cast so she instead lingered around the set due to her boyfriend being Polanski. Sharon said a line in this episode, The devil is beautiful. You'll find him in the people you'd never expect. It's actually rumored that Sharon Tate did actually say something similar on set as she grew more and more interested with the occult. She apparently said, the devil is beautiful. Most people think he's ugly, but he's not. So that's most likely the reason that they utilized Sharon Tate in this episode in the way that they did. We saw Mia Farrow putting on the prop to make her look pregnant and she started bleeding when she got back into her dressing room and we saw the usual demonic arms crawling around inside. In the distance, we heard Siobhan's voice and she told her how to stop it. When Mia opened the door, she said, how did you know? And Siobhan said, women's intuition. I'm presuming that this meant that Mia was pregnant at the time and Siobhan knew. This isn't the earliest that we've seen Siobhan as we saw the Ravenhead version of her where she's identifiable by the necklace that was present on her as early as 46 AD in the previous episode. But it shows us that Siobhan is 100% one of the witches or Satanists and is most likely immortal. She's probably the her or she that Ivy was referring to in the previous episode as well. Showing that like with the auteur in the present day, it seems like Rosemary's baby's success yet also the cursed nature of the film could be attributed to Siobhan's involvement and maybe a deal that got made. Cora was behind the strange occurrences. During this episode, we got the revelation that the Ravenheads weren't the individuals that were behind the strange things that had been happening to Anna directly in front of her such as the breaking into her apartment, the messages on the mirror, being late for appointments, notes being teared up, and things that were in the physical world, not inside of Anna's mind. 
Gex was actually cheating on Anna with Cora, and all of these strange events were able to happen because he gave her a key to the apartment and set up cameras which allowed her to watch the apartment's every move. She almost treated watching the security cameras like a reality TV show, and she became obsessed with Anna, to the point where she wanted to be Anna. However, it was once Dex eventually broke up with Cora that she lost it, and then the break-in occurred on the night from episode 1. It was in this episode where she revealed the secrets that were going on with Dr. Hill, and that the people that worked there were doing something to her baby. I did question the sincerity of Cora's confession and reveal, and I am still questioning it now. The fact that she said that she was only working there because she had student loans to pay off was kind of like a flip to everything that we're seeing. We're seeing people making deals with the devil in order to get success, and with Cora, she's prepared to lose her morals in order to earn money to pay off the debt that she has. So it was almost like a deal to herself that she was making. One key moment in this scene, though, was that the only thing that in the physical world that Cora wasn't behind was the dolls that kept appearing. This is something that's most definitely done by the Ravenheads. The dolls almost acted like voodoo dolls at points, and Anna's body in reality would respond to how certain dolls would be. With that tying into the hallucinative effects that Anna has been having due to the baby that's inside of her, that shows that it is probably them. Dreams becoming nightmares. With regards to Ms. Preacher in this episode, we saw that she arrived at Dex's mother's funeral in a panicked state and was telling Dex how she tried to warn him and how he should listen to his wife. Most likely because she warned her two episodes back. However, she was taken out by security and sent to the ER so that she could be sedated. It was once she was there where Anna arrived to visit her and we saw that Ms. Preacher said, They'll take everything from you. Your dream will become a nightmare. This was something that I didn't think much of at the time, but it was once Anna was about to leave that she actually appeared on the TV screen behind her as an Oscar nominee, and all of the staff went absolutely crazy. We obviously knew that Anna wanted the Oscar and was prepared to give anything up for it, but there is a dark side to fame, and what if that dark side is what's going to appear as a consequence to the deal that she made with Siobhan? With her also winning the Oscar at the end of the episode and her dream coming true, it very much looks like the nightmare has only just begun as she's gone into labor to deliver the demon that lies within her. Miss Preacher was taken by a group of women, the women that we can only presume are the Ravenheads, the same ones that probably killed Dex's mother and appeared in front of her before she met with Miss Preacher. So it's not looking good for her as it seems like she could be meeting her end just like how Virginia did. My review of the episode. I thought this was an okay episode of the show. I was a little disappointed with how short the episode was considering we're building towards the finale. It was literally about 30 minutes. And I also feel like a lot was put in there which made the pacing just feel a bit off. But I'm glad we're finally starting to get some answers to the questions that we've all had for the past eight months. The use of Siobhan in this episode and having her wearing a necklace, which was a snake, was a really interesting choice. It felt like a subtle way of showing us how she was almost the snake, which in the Bible can often be the devil in disguise. So it was right under our noses in this episode. Plus, her gloves having the demon-like claws coming out of them showed us the true side to Siobhan for the first time in the entirety of the season. With Siobhan saying congratulations to Anna before she was announced as the Oscar winner, it showed that Anna is now soon to be the next Miss Preacher and she'll be giving birth to the demon that's inside of her, the one which was described as the purest product of them all. The fact that Dex's father was so happy to see how big Anna was piqued my interest too. We obviously know that he's involved in this in some way, but his eagerness in his tone is something that stayed with me. The ending painted a bleak future for Anna and that all of her fears are most likely going to be coming apparent in the finale. She's fully aware of the fact that there could be something going on with her baby, just like what happens in Rosemary's baby. So it's going to be interesting to see how it's going to play out. Do I think Delicate has been one of the best seasons of the show? Personally, I definitely don't think so. It's been pretty mid to be honest. I do wonder if the show will ever get back to the heights that it had when it first came out and I would really like it to but I just feel as though maybe the formula and style has reached its end. Concepts such as Freak Show and Asylum were really interesting and original, but this doesn't quite have that sense of originality or darkness that feels truly believable. I say that, but I do still get enjoyment out of watching the show. I just hope they can nail the ending next week. So, I guess, until then. So, there you have it. American Horror Story Delicate Season 12 Episode 8 Ending Explained as always, thanks for tuning into the video and I'll see you in the next one.